One more minute, Chris, and I think we're ready if you are. Oh, we're on Facebook Live now. Buju, Anin, and welcome to the Cancer and COVID Mental Health and Social Distance Powwow discussion. We're even one minute early. Everybody's getting on. Um, I am Chris Rhodes. My family and I are from the Fond du Lac and Bad River Bands of Lake Superior Chippewa. I'm the CEO of the American Indian Cancer Foundation. And today I'm joined by Melissa Buffalo, Deputy Director at the American Indian Cancer Foundation and enrolled member of the Meskwaki Nation and Lakota from Crow Creek and Lower Brule Bru Tribes. Thank you for joining us today for this exciting conversation. We're hosting these events to bring attention to the connection between cancer and COVID-19 across Indian country. As you know, COVID-19 is having devastating impacts on communities that are already facing tremendous health conditions. Um, and it's especially impactful on people with weakened immune systems. ACAF is dedicated to making sure Native families with cancer are connected and cared for. May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And since powwows are all about social connection and good mental health for all of us, Today, we are talking with two of the brilliant people who have lifted up so many of us with the social distance powwow. As many of you know, our largest community event and fundraiser at the American Indian Cancer Foundation is Powwow for Hope. Powwow for Hope is an annual celebration of cancer survivors and families that have courageously faced this diagnosis. And through this community event, we're able to face this awful disease together, support each other as one family and one community. And of course, this year we have to pivot our event to a virtual event in order to protect our loved ones. Hi everyone. So thank you for taking time out of your day to join us in this conversation. We hope to leave room for questions at the end of the discussion. So, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the chat box or on, I think in the comments on Facebook, um, we'll be sure to address them. Um, and if we're able to due to time, we'll follow, we'll definitely follow up with you. Um, so as we get started, we want to know again where everyone is joining us from today. So I think there should be a poll coming up on the Zoom. Again, if you're on Facebook, go ahead and comment where you're joining us from. Did the poll come up? Hopefully I see folks commenting. Awesome. So again, today we are joined by Whitney Renkowner and Jesse Taken Alive Renkowner, some of the co-founders of the Social Distance Powwow on Facebook. Welcome. Hello, thanks for, thanks for having us. And I, I also wanna give a shout out to Dan Simon, Stephanie Ebert, uh, my two other co-founders, uh, my wife here, is, is unfortunately not a co-founder, but she's the host of, a, of the Women Empowerment Show. Uh, so she's kind of, I guess, since she's uh, my set, my better half, I guess <laughs> technically she helped co-found in that way. So <laughs> I wanted to give a shout out to Dan Simons and Stephanie Ebert, my other two co-founders. Hope you guys are doing good. Oh, okay, time out. I'm sorry, the poll did just come up. So I apologize for that. <laughs> sure. So maybe Jesse and Whitney, you want to share where you guys are joining us from? Yep. So we submitted it. <laughs> we, there was no Nativia on there, so I couldn't select that. But uh... <laughs> I said we should add Napa. <laughs> <laughs> and we're uh, actually joining you all from uh, Rapid City, South Dakota, here in the the gateway to the Black Hills. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So again, again, just wanted to welcome you all and give a little brief overview before we go into some of our questions. So. Um, we know that the social distance powwow is a platform that's created um, in a response to the COVID-19 pandemic for our Native families and loved ones, again, to share those Indigenous songs, dances, art, language, stories, and culture as we help um, people through this challenging time. Social distance powwow aims to give Indigenous people a worldwide platform to inspire others. And again, the social distance powwow, I believe has over 180,000 members and seems to grow every day. 
So again, just kind of going into some of the questions for Jesse and Whitney. So for some of those who may not know, can you tell us a little more about what the social distance powwow is? Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> We're celebrating eight weeks um, this week. It's hard to believe, uh, you know, that it's already gone by so fast. We started around uh, let's see, what is the month today? I think March 16th, I believe. And, um, and so Dan Simons uh, was a, well, he is the owner of Wampum Ware and he's a powwow vendor. And he's also, I believe he's in real estate also up there in Bozeman, Montana. He reached out to me when this all started, we were all stuck at home and we just found out Denver March powwow was canceled. Uh, Gather Ganesis was canceled, all kinds of powwows uh, were being canceled. And uh, he reached out to me and asked me if I'd be willing, you know, if he, he's setting up this page called the Social Distance Powwow, would I be willing to come help out, be, a, be the MC, uh, kind of help promote uh, this page in that way. And, and uh, at first I was a little skeptical, to be honest. I was like, how are we going to have a powwow virtually? Because to have a powwow, you need people to gather. You need to be together you need, in order to have a uh, MC in order for an MC to introduce people and to share, you got to be uh, in one place. So at first I was a little skeptical, but when I heard in his voice, kind of the, the, uh, the sadness that the fact that we cannot go to powwows anymore together and be with our friends and families. I mean, that we realized then it was a reality and that kind of gave me a little bit of inspiration as well. So I think Dan and I is kind of our, our, our heart to heart that day when we talked about it sprung the idea to have a platform to share just to give some people hope and I think that's really what it's all about when you bring the songs dances the art when you bring uh you know the the talents of indigenous peoples when you bring those together it, it does something and it, it ignites this energy and um and I think that's we had no idea social distance powwow was going to become what it became but I just think it's uh it's a beautiful experience uh, and we're so thankful for all of our members and for all the, the spectators but especially all those that freely send in their videos of singing and dancing and their artwork and their stories and you know uh, uh, people are now reaching out from across the nation across the world and wanting to share their events on our page and we're very happy that it, it's become a platform for a lot of people and so that's kind of how the in a nutshell how the, the page came about. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you kind of answered the, the next question because the next one talked about, you know, coming up with that idea and I think you, you shared that and that's so amazing. So I think we'll go ahead and go on to the next one. So what impacts are COVID-19 having on Indigenous people's mental and physical health? And how, do you, how does the social distance powwow address those needs? Well, uh... Well, you know, for example, uh, the impact is when we can't be around people, when we can't be around our family and friends, the, the embracing the hugs, the handshakes, or just being in that vicinity of, a, of another spirit, of, a, of another, the energy of somebody else does something and it uplifts our spirits. It gives us a reason to live. It gives us uh, support. If we're going through difficult times in our lives and struggles, uh, Without that is what we're facing now, you start to lose a little bit of hope and you start to you start to question what our existence in this world is really all about. But I think um, the social distance powwow allows us to connect without actually physically being in the room with somebody. Uh, I remember early on one of the one of the stories that sticks with me one day uh, after work, um, I, was, I, I was on the page and kind of just checking things out and looking at the videos and such. And I came across this live video, this young man was on there and uh, he said he was going through a hard time. He was feeling depressed. He was already suicidal. He was going through such a difficult time with this COVID-19 outbreak um, that he was feeling suicidal again. And, um, and so he said, but when he came on the social distance power page and he saw some videos of people just sharing some songs, some dances and their experience, some other music and just kind of sharing like that. He, he said he felt inspired. And so he was on and he was going to share some songs. And that just kind of gave him a little bit of inspiration and just enough to get through that day and, and to look forward to seeing uh, the community of the social distance powwow. 
uh, we have we have people that are on there all the time that uh, a lot of elders, especially that have reached out to say that they actually haven't been to been able to go to powwows for a long time or they haven't been able to go to events for a long time because of their health issues. While with the social distance powwow, they're seeing a lot of people they've never seen for a long time come onto the show or come onto the page or any any event we might have um, that's given them hope. And it's they're very thankful for that. I think that as indigenous people, um, historically and even and today, we as indigenous people, we like to be around people. We like to have that connection. Um, just piggybacking off of what they said is having that spiritual connection with other people. And you know, when we talk about um, being able to or having to stay and not have not being able to gather in, in large crowds and such, it is really hard on a lot of our people and on, on all everyone, despite our race and such. But this powwow, this um, social distance powwow online, it provides an opportunity for people to get on. And, you know, if somebody posts something in the group, they can see it on the news feed. Um, they can see the vibrant colors that people are, are using with their regalia. But also even more important is hearing that drum beat. And for us as indigenous peoples, for many, many generations, that drum beat has been really good medicine. And you know, our, our people talk about how not only is it a reminder to us about that safety feeling when we're in our mother's wombs um, as, as babies and such, it's comforting, but also it's very therapeutic. You know, it, it doesn't matter, I think, what culture you come from, there's some type of drum that's involved that is very therapeutic that will help our, uplift our spirits. And so that's the beautiful thing about this is that um, when you're like, everybody has a phone that you can log into and, and scroll and then be able to hear those drums, hear those, um, like the bells or the jingles and such of people's regalias. And so it's, it's really beautiful. I agree. It, it, it's been very beautiful. And I've seen so many people just loving it. And like you said, it's um, all sorts of people who haven't been able to get out and about and are able to stay connected. Um, so again, thank you both and for everybody behind making this happen. Um, so the social distance powwow has gathered over 180,000 people because people are loving this. And it's just been on a short amount of time um, with many individuals sharing their stories, offering up prayers and healing to those around them. What has stood out to you most about um, engagement within the page? Well, you know, I, I would say um, the, the, for me, it's, it's uh, giving our entrepreneurs, um, like, for example, a lot of our traditional artists, as, as many people know across the nation and across the world, in America, we have, there's an act that protects Indigenous artists, that when, we, when Indigenous people sell their artwork, um, you know, this, the, the Native American Act that protects Indigenous entrepreneurs and artists, that it has to be recognized as Native American made. And I think that is one of the things about this page has been uh, that we have a marketplace also where, where, where people can still sell their goods and still make a living selling some of their stuff. And we've had people reach out to us continuously telling us how thankful they are for the page because now they have access to selling their goods you know, selling and, peop and people also reaching out to us, thanking us that they have access to buying beads and buying, you know, say, you know, other things that they use, just daily use of, you know, things that they help them through this time. And a lot of those uh, artisans and vendors donate back to the social distance powwow. They give, they send us things to donate that they, that, because we have specials, um, like a couple of weekends ago, we had a special for graduates and uh, for the graduating seniors. And so we gave them prize money and that all comes from stuff that was given back to us uh, for this page. Um, and I, I just think, you know, yet yesterday we had a special honoring for Native, Native American honoring for uh, students from Mulbridge Pollock School up near Standing Rock Reservation. And we hosted their graduation because they couldn't have their feathering ceremony, you know, and we hosted it on here and they loved it and they were happy and they were thankful that they can, you know, be recognized in that way. And then we had a, a, a birthday party for a 100 year old grandmother the day before live on this page and Northern Cree singers came on and sang her happy birthday. She came on and she was singing herself and talking and her family all got to come on and share because they were quarantined and locked down. 
um, you know, and then just the fact that we were able to reach so far people from all all areas of Turtle Island, all indigenous peoples. We brought we brought on guest MCs to share their dances from their area. I just think the fact that it's bringing and it's providing a platform that uh, indigenous peoples really, uh, where we, we struggle to have our voices heard. You know, a lot of cases were invisible, especially in the K through 12 education systems. You don't learn a lot about indigenous peoples. So I think this platform is really showing us what is possible into the future. And I, that's, that's for me kind of the, I think that inspiration of being able to uh, utilize our, ta our, our talents as indigenous peoples and really take control of our own destiny in that way. I, pre I really think that's what's the most inspirational. And, you know, I, you know, everything that I agree with, everything that Whitney said, I want to um, add on to that as well, too, is, you know, I, I've seen something um, posted by a, a young woman on there saying that how happy she was for this page because, and I totally 100% agree with her that this is a page showing the world that we're not a people of just our past. You know, we're not just mm -hmm. um, people like our Plains region people that live in teepees. We're showing the world that, hey, we're still here. We're still thriving with our culture and it's beautiful. So not only showing the world that we're still here and thriving, but also showing our own indigenous young people that, wow, look at our beautiful culture. We have a beautiful culture and this is something that you can turn to um, that'll help you feel good and give you that sense of identity and, and even direction as well too seeing um, some of the dancers and singers come on that are really um, successful in living in two worlds meaning you know sometimes you know they're doctors but yet they're still singers or they're fancy dancers but yet they're still lawyers you know we're thriving living in two worlds balancing that culture and so for me that's really exciting um, showcasing the world that we're still here but also giving hope for our young people thank you for sharing those examples i i too have been loving the resiliency we're seeing out of our communities and our people. And when we think about this devastating um, situation that we could end up losing all hope, we have people like you all and the people that are posting their stories doing such beautiful work to keep us all uplifted. Appreciate it. Yeah, and I think that just totally goes into the next question or the next thing we wanted to talk about. And I want to step back because I think I forgot to introduce your guys' as tribe. So I want to say Whitney's an enrolled member of the Crow Creek Sioux Tribe and Jesse is an enrolled member of the Standing Rock Sioux Tribe. So I apologize for that. <laughs> but okay. um, Jesse, you totally brought it up. And I think it, it's we talk about how Indigenous people are resilient and we've always been resilient in the face of adversity. So I don't think so, you know, it doesn't surprise any of us that we're seeing so many people come together from across the country from all different walks of life, right? Absolutely. Uh, being able to meet a lot of new friends, um, a lot of our First Nations, Indigenous people up from Canada, and even down into the Southwest, and just meeting new people and um, seeing and, and sharing their hopes that, and as, as well as um, their excitement for the page as well too. Hearing songs that we haven't heard before, seeing different regalia that we're not used to seeing if we usually stay on the power trail around the, this area. And so it's really exciting to kind of come across and, and connect with more indigenous people. And, and this platform, this social distance power has provided that platform for that. And so um, it's pretty exciting. It's like one huge power. <laughs> Exactly. I love it. So are there any other strategies we think about when you're that you're utilizing to create such an amazing following that just really uplifts so many people? Well, you know, I think um, when we talk about uh, experiences, I truly, you know, for myself growing up on the reservation, I, uh, I, I got to see firsthand kind of, um, you know, the, the, the division between reservation towns and a town, a border town or a reservation, you know, especially here in South Dakota. And I'm sure it's, a, it's like that across the nation. Others, maybe not so much, but, but uh, in South Dakota, it's been that way. And, uh, you know, to me, the, the biggest uh, issue that we face across this nation and across the world is, is we're, as a, as a people in general, uh, if you don't, if you don't grow up and learning firsthand about our own people, you know, you understand, you don't learn about historically what took place in America with indigenous peoples. Uh, we, we, I remember when I was in school, I learned about the Holocaust in, in Germany. 
You know, I learned about the Holocaust over there in Europe, but I didn't learn anything about my ancestors. And my grandparents talked a little bit about that, but because they went to boarding schools, they really did not discuss any of it. And here we are on the reservation, we're facing a lot of issues of, you know, terminal illnesses, we're facing a lot of addictions, and we're facing a lot of things that come along with that. So I, when I went to college and I learned about a lot of these things, it's like, for me, it's like, man, our ancestors, they used to hunt the buffalo, 80,000 buffalo in one herd, and they were riding alongside those buffalo, and they would bring it back for the people, and our grandmothers, and our mothers, and our aunties, and our sisters, and nieces, and, and you know, daughters, they were all just kind of working continuously as a tribe. Everybody was always pitching in. It was community. It was all of the things that we're missing today, and so I think for me, it's like, that brought back a sense of passion in my life as an indigenous person that overcame a lot of struggles in my own personal life. And so when I saw uh, the abilities to use this platform to, to give our, our people that hope and, and to give our people that platform to say, we have something to say, we have talent, uh, you know, we, we deserve a place in this world to be recognized, uh, we deserve to thrive. We deserve to continue uh, to, to find success in this world. And, and, and to us as Indigenous peoples, you know, success doesn't mean you have the most money or you have the most, uh, you know, belongings. Success is meaning that you're connected with a lot of people, that your family and your friends that you come in contact with, that you, that you're, that you have that relationship, that you treat them well, they treat you well, you, you understand one another. And I think for Indigenous peoples, that's always kind of been the thing is community is so important. And it's not wrong, but it's different. In, in American society, it's always been about an individual uh, uh, success. And, and how do you attain that? And how do you become a success in that way? And I'm just saying, one thing about this page is that it's given us that true idea of what community is really all about with the fact that we're sharing space together. Um, that's really what it culminates into. And that's what we're really happy about. It is. I, I think as someone that lives in an urban setting right now that grew up in South Dakota, like seeing this page, like for Mother's Day, like seeing how many moms came and posted and, you know, then you, you see those stories that are shared too, that, that, you know, we didn't all have a good upbringing and for folks to be able to share that on that page has been just powerful. Mm, thank you. So Jesse, as the host of the Women's Empowerment Hour, I want to learn more about this. And can you tell us about how our Indigenous women come together at this time? We know we um, Indigenous women are the backbone of Indian country, the world, right? <laughs> Absolutely. So, you know, actually how this started was um, Whitney kind of put the, the idea in my ear. He um, there was a couple, there was a well, more than a couple, there were some women that had requested a presence of having more women on the social distance powwow um, because he was serving as an MC and, you know, and, and, you know, he was like, yeah, you know, that's a really good idea, but I'm, I'm not going to host a, a women's empowerment show as a man. And he goes, I think it needs to come from a woman. And, um, and he kind of put it in my ear and I thought about it for about a week and a half. And I was like, gosh, I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I have the confidence to do that. Then I thought about the idea of it, um, about the power of, of unity and uplifting that we can do as women. I said, I said, you know what? Okay, I'll do it. I don't know how I'm going to do it, but I'll do it. And so we kind of started, you know, thinking of what this wants. I started thinking of how I want the show to look like. And I thought, you know what? I want to highlight Indigenous women that, um, are in the power world, but also they're doing beautiful things in their communities. They're um, uplifting their communities in their own ways, but at the same time, they're so talented, either singing or dancing, um, that they can balance those two worlds. And so on top of that, you know, the main reason for this was to uplift and encourage our other Indigenous women. And, you know, we all, most of us know the history of our of our people that historically a lot of our tribes, our indigenous people were, were a, a matriarchal system and our, our women were the backbone of our communities. 
And, you know, that's not really learned about in history books because we're usually not the ones who write them. And so it's important for us to be able to remind our women today about the beauty and the power that we as women hold, you know, and I, I really um, empowered, you know, kind of, it's kind of funny. I'm really empowered um, from my own dad. Growing up, I was able to hear about the beauty and the power of women from my dad. You know, he, he always talked about, my dad's one of the most humble men out there, um, but he always really talked about how he says, we're really, in our Lakota language, we use the word unshika, like pitiful, as men, he says. It's our women that are very powerful, our women that have that um, sacredness to them. And he says, it's our women that can bring life into this world. And so um, he said, it's always a beautiful blessing. You know, he says, as families, when we have daughters and he's, um, and so it's really, it's, it was really uh, kind of ingrained in me about the beauty and the power of our women. And so being able to try to remind other Indigenous women who might be struggling in different ways um, to be able to try to be uplifted from seeing other Indigenous women. You know, and I think as Indigenous women, when we uplift each other, man, our whole Indigenous people are uplifted. When we empower each other, you know, our when we have healthy women and when you have healthy young girls, we have healthy mothers, we have healthy aunties and grandmothers. And because we're the backbone of our people, even today, historically and today, that means that we have healthy families, which when we have healthy families, that means we have healthy communities. And so really wanting to focus on our uplifting our women, because you know, they are women, like I said, our mothers, we, we can raise our future daughters or who, are, who will be our future women and our sons who will be the future fathers and husbands and such too. So, you know, just really wanting to focus on that. Um, and it's been a very powerful show. And each week uh, we took the Mother's Day off just to let everybody celebrate their mothers and, you know, take that day off. But each week that it's been happening, it just gets more beautiful, more powerful. And I'm like, I get off the show living really empowered. <laughs> so it's um it's really a beautiful thing to see our, our women out there sharing their songs, their beautiful voices, and sharing their beautiful dancing. So watch. Um, so as we think about that parenting and raising these babies and you know, just seeing those babies drumming on some of those and you know, posting about the prayers for our elders and our young children and just really doing those honor songs for their loved ones. So while we know that some of our indigenous people don't always participate in powwows or you know it's not part of their customs, but you know, what are some of those other ways that individuals can engage or be part of the social distancing powwow? And I think you know, we've really talked about it, but are there anything, any other things you think about? Yeah, you know, <clears throat> I think um, it, it is it is a it is really uh, challenging for an individual that did not grow up around the home, like myself. Uh, my grandfather sat me down at the drum when I was a little boy, and he made my he made all of our regalia, all the grandchildren. And my grandfather had six daughters, so he really he really didn't. Um, in our traditional way, it's the men that that have to sit at the drum. And the, the, the female, because they have so much power, so much respect is given that they stand behind the men in what they call the wechaglata or wechaglata in our language. Basically that, and, and I, I heard uh, Mr. Jerome Kilsmall, you know, talk about wechaglata basically means they make them sound better, you know, and, and so, and, and there's some family drums that females sit at the drum. I mean, that, that, that's some of the exceptions. But they say when our when the females are on the time of the month, they have the power to to uh, over overpower uh, the drum or the ceremonies, and so that's why out of respect has nothing to do with anything other than teaching us about the traditional stories about anahite, you know, and, and the traditional stories in that sense of historically how our kinships rules are there and they're set forth to help teach us what not to do. To help us like Ikdomi is always trying to trick us into negativity or into trying to think a certain way about certain people but but historically our people have experienced a lot of these traditional ways they've been passed down to us for a reason and so we just kind of follow those things and I think a lot of times when we lose track of those that's when we experience uh, some of the negativity or some of the things but so when we get to the the folks that have never experienced like myself in the traditional home 
or my wife in her traditional home, I think we understand that sometimes we don't, we don't connect to it as much and that's okay. I think the beauty about the social distance powwow is not is it's not just about singing and dancing, that it's also a platform to share. Like what what you said about Mother's Day, I mean we there was a period in time there where all the first responders, all the frontline workers were, and it's still happening, posting on their way to work or when they were at work, and all the people would get on thanking them, and that was and that's part of community there. Or there's a graduation theme going on now where graduates and parents are posting their how proud they are of their children and and a lot of people are engaging with them uh we send prayers and, and share what's happening at the navajo nation uh we, we other places around the world and so it's more than just a powwow it's 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 become kind of a, a platform for indigenous people and i think that's why so much people are on here because if it was just all powwow people it wouldn't be half what it is and it's it's because it's what it is, it's a platform for everybody. And everybody finds their own role. Uh, people come on and tell stories. People come on and share things that are happening in their community. People come on to share, you know, many different topics. And I think that's the beauty of it is it's continuously evolving. And that's what we hope into the future it continues to evolve. Mm -hmm. And even, you know, sharing, I, I got on I remember one time and seeing some artists do some live work on it, on the social distance Powell, and I was amazed. And then at just the thought of like, wow, there we have so many talented people amongst our indigenous uh, communities uh, that they are artists and they're jewelry makers. And it's really beautiful to see them go live on the page and, and share their talents. And I always think they're like artistic geniuses because I can barely draw a stick, man. <laughs> so, you know, just being able to see them to get on and, and share different types of talents like that, um, and even humor as well, too. It's uh, as part of, as, um, I, I know the Ruben Littlehead family, they hosted their final special on, it's like a family skit is what they had hosted on the Powa page. And it was really funny to get on and see these families coming together and to connect um, and do different skits from like, you know, like smoke signals, like the winner of that special was so hilarious. I don't know how many times I rewatched that uh, skit, but it was like, that's who we are as native people. We love to laugh. We have that native humor. And um, I think that's one big thing that you know, keeps us going through these times like this. And so, yeah, it's not just power, you know, it's, it's humor, it's sharing your art and uh, mm -hmm. it's really a beautiful thing to see people coming on and, and uplifting each other. And, and for the most part, it's been a really positive page, you know, uh, if you're feeling down, jump on that social distance power and you'll see all the different amazing things posted in this, in the, right. on the page. So. I know for me, that's been, you know, when you go on and you're like, oh, your newspaper is posting breaking news every day. And I'm like, oh, but then you see these <laughs> amazing, the social distance powwow posts and how, again, you see a baby and a grandma or, you know, those, those thanking posts. Um, so that's been very helpful. And I love that part about it. And again, just, you know, we're thinking about engaging everybody. Like, that's such a beautiful thing. I know. Um, and we think about too, like we want folks, you know, if back if we we're in a normal place, we'd think about, oh, there's conferences to go to. But like you got Jackie Bird on there to sing and how many times, you know, like folks get to see her or Serene sharing her flute music and like some of, you know, we, we think, how do we get folks to go to these important trainings and opportunities to heal? And I think that really provides that. Yeah. Um, Jackie's been great, um, you know, having Jackie and people like Serene with such positive influences and uh, just willing it. And, and Jackie mentioned that when she, her, her uh, biggest uh, uh, resume builder was performing at the Olympics in Utah when the Olympics came there. And she said she wasn't nervous, but she, you know, but she said when she was first asked to come to the social distance powwow, <laughs> how big of a platform it is, she got nervous for Aww. the first time, she said. And that was, you know, I was like, oh my goodness, Jackie, you're so good at what you do. Why, why would you get nervous? But I think she just kind of feels like it's a she said it's a sacred place. The social distance power is kind of really, it's helping a lot of people through this time. And when we get tired and we lose some of our energy because it's constant, you know, we work to keep this page going. Yeah. Uh, Dan Simons and Stephanie Ebert, you know, they, they also, we, we always kind of touch base, take care of yourself, make sure your family's good. Don't neglect your family or your daily work. But I think we know that this is such an important time and this page plays an important role in helping people to stay away from the news 
and the negativity. I think it's it's important for us to do that. So I'm glad there's a team of us that are, are working on this page. Agree. And I think you kind of went into that next question again, as we again, we think about social media, or maybe I did, but you know, we think about again, how it kind of can get that bad rep or it's draining, but it, you know, when we look at the social distance pound, it's done the complete opposite. So we think, tell me a little bit about what those effects on the individual's mental, mental well being, And, you know, what are you really doing to flip that script? And you've, you've shared some of that. So maybe just expand on that. Yeah. <clears throat> you know, I, I think um, there's just something about it. I remember I was feeling like the other night, I was feeling a little lonesome. I was feeling a little down, even though I'm here with my wife and our babies. But when you're sitting at a powwow, I mean, I, and I don't know how many of you have ever been to a powwow in the summertime at one of the reservations. When you're there with your family, when you're there at a, at a place amongst your, your people and, and, and you're joking and you're laughing and you're, it, it, re it releases endorphins. And then when you hear a song, uh, when you hear a song that's, uh, that's beautiful and it helps you to feel good, it just does something. So I came on the other day and I was just like, you know what, ad lib, I, I'm not making any plans to do this. I'm just going to get on and share some of these old songs. And there was an old song that my grandfather used to sing, and I'll just share like maybe a verse of it to kind of just let the viewers listen, and you guys can kind of listen in and, and just, just feel the song once and see how it makes you feel. But <clears throat> yeah. So those songs, they, they'll take you to a back, back to a place when you're sitting there uh, eating a bowl of uh, soup or, uh, you know, bapa soup or traditional soup or you're, you're sharing food with your family and your friends and you're sitting there on a beautiful summer night. Um, there's just something about that. You can't explain it. It just gives you this kind of, it releases hope. And, it, and, I, and I've seen my, my aunties. Uh, going through maybe terminal illnesses or they're going through a hard time emotionally. But when we go to Opawa or we're sitting around at these gatherings, my grandfather used to set up an arbor outside our, our one of my auntie's uh, homes, the, the land they had there. And we would just gather. It just seems like um, uh, something comes over you. Something overtakes you. And, and I think that it, uh, it's hard to explain that in a scientific manner. It's hard to it's hard to share that uh, with people, um, and so. But when I sat there and I sang those songs, it just kind of brought it gave me. I was like, okay, everything's gonna be all right. We didn't have to leave everything behind with this COVID nineteen, and we don't have to. I think that's really what it comes down to is we when we learn and when we understand that we're adjusting for a time being, we're taking a pause mm -hmm. with what's going on in the world today. But in the end, when everything gets back to the new normal, whatever that may be, yeah, we'll be more cognizant of our surroundings. We'll be a little more, we'll, we'll try to be safer. We'll, but I think ultimately, when we can find a place to, to do the things that we love and enjoy uh, and, and uh, find and learn how, how to keep ourselves from the self-suffering that a lot of us do when we worry or when we try to control things that we can't control or when we try to uh, experience things by missing all of the small things that happen in our lives and the joy that our children bring, that our family brings. Uh, and, and so when you culminate all those things together, you find the hope to live mm -hmm. and you find the hope and you get up the next day and you say, tomorrow's gonna be a better day. And I believe in that. And I just really can't get over the fact that uh, and, and, and really talk about it enough that the fact that we as indigenous people, we, we always prayed. 
we always prayed simple prayers. And I think so often today, there are many different religions and many different ways to pray. But as but as indigenous peoples, the, our medicine wheel, you know, that, that Hochoka, we, we have the, all the colors of people in the world. And everybody has their own role and way of living life, including prayer. But I think ultimately, we all know that we come from the same place. That creator made each and every one of us. And even though our, our differences are there and our views are different at, at times, but when we break it down to the simple fact that creator made all of us, then we kind of, it takes away some of that <clears throat> suffering that we go through. So that's the beautiful part of uh, a page like Social Distance Powwow is it brings a lot of people from different walks of life uh, together in one place. Sorry, my wife had to use the restroom, so <laughs> talking, so she'll, she'll be right back. But does that uh, kind of answer the question? I think so. That, that one, I'm sure I speak for everybody that's watching. Thank you for sharing that. Um, it is a hard time, and I think we could easily get lonely, and we and I could get emotional because we think about the importance of wanting to go home, and we just can't right now. But again, you said it perfectly because it's just it's the time being; it's not permanent. So. Sure. Absolutely. I'll, I'll add on to a little bit of that last question about um, like staying away from the news and such. Um, so I always like, so I'm a school counselor and I, I've worked with elementary students and I've worked with high school students over the past 11 or 12 years and um, well, 13 years actually. But one of the things that I've come across that's really changed my life and my outlook on, on everything basically is um, I read a book about um, the power of how water holds like memory and, and energy and such. And some you know, people may have heard of this, uh, a study by a, a Japanese scientist by the name of Dr. Imato. And what he did is he studied the effects of water that it can actually change its structure, molecular structure. And he found out that music and words and even pictures can change that water. And so I always share with my students, like, that's so powerful, that study, because you think about it, we as individuals, our bodies are made up of up to like what they say, up to 70% of water. And so what we expose ourselves to um, really will change us down to a molecular level. Um, so if we always are constantly listening to the news, which we have off, you know, we want to, well, we'll turn on the news to see what's going on but most of the time it's off in our home but um it, it'll change us it'll change and it can spark fear um there's rarely ever good news on the news stations <laughs> but you know it'll change us uh, that molecular structure and we we've all experienced it after watching news for a long time we get up feeling like oh just heavy and kind of like fearful fearful way down, way down yes but when you are around like our indigenous drums and you know we see dancers dancing or, or whatever it is, um, we, we feel different. And that goes right back down, back to like that study on what this uh, Dr. Moto had shared with us. And so I always share, you know, and even with our daughters about the power of what we feed ourselves, not just physically, but, you know, our minds, what, what are we listening to? What are we watching and such? Because um, that's what we're going to feel. And so, um, the, yeah, I, I, I don't know how many years ago I kind of stopped watching news. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but you know, just that. So, you know, I, that's one thing about this, be, the beautiful thing about this is it does give you hope, the drums, the music, the, um, the scene, the dancing and such. So. Thank you so much, both of you for your words. So when COVID-19 is over or it's deemed safe to go outside and socialize again, what powwow are you heading to first? <laughs> and we'd like to have our viewers weigh in on this too in the chat box and comment on the Facebook. Um, I know we're all missing so many of our favorite powwows, but I'd like to hear yours. Well, when this is all over and um, uh, safe and we can be around people again, so on and so forth, the, the, what, what powwow that I will go to? The first powwow. <laughs> that's the power that I'm going to go to. I don't care where it's at. Uh, what, but, but, in, but in terms of some of my favorites, you know, I, I think I just, you know, right now we're still holding out hope in Bismarck, North Dakota in September, that first week, 
they already have their sponsorship. So I think that helps them in their case. A lot of powwows have to fundraise. So this is killing a lot of powwows that have to fundraise. But I think uh, uh, the United Tribes Technical College, they have a powwow in Bismarck, North Dakota that they have. And I'm going to be the MC during the Tribal Leader Summit. So I spend like six or seven days there emceeing the, the Tribal Leader Summit, the Youth Day and the powwow. Uh, so I'm hoping, I mean, because that's such a fun week. Um, I'm hoping we can still hold out hope that that might happen. But if not, you know, I uh, got a call from the Lakota Food Summit Committee, February 2021. <laughs> They're gonna have, they, they invited me back to MC that one. So, but no, it's just with the first power when they kick things back up, everybody's gonna be racing, uh, heading there. And, and I think with, with precautions as well. Yeah, I, I think I'm the same with Whitney, like whatever is happening, we will be there. You know, our daughters and I were just talking about this the other night. We're like, gosh, you know, whatever, when the power season starts back up, hopefully we still have one, you know, it's like, we just want to be there, even if we're not able to dance, just to go. And as you're walking, our favorite time, you know, well, mine is like in the evening time when the sun is starting to go down, it's not super hot, but, you know, people are getting ready for grand entry and you can smell like the food vendors and hear the drums. And I mean, it's just like, we were just talking about that. We're like, gosh, I feel like we took powwows for granted. And now that when the powwows start back up, gosh, we're going to enjoy them even more than we did before. I mean, we enjoyed them before, but we're going to, we're going to really <laughs> enjoy them a lot more. So. Chris, I see you commented. Yours makes perfect sense. I might, I don't even know if I, you guys topped it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for hope. I think somebody commented little shell. Yeah, little that's shell a, yeah. yeah, that's another good one. Um, I, hopefully this would be kind of cool, you know, and maybe Whitney has already in, entertained that. I, well, he did. He's actually really in, entertained the idea about having when things kind of start coming back where we can socialize and be together again to have a, a a real physical social distance powwow um, that they're hosting and you know inviting people to come and you know be a make it a big powwow, you know, um, in a place that it would be, you know, a center place for indigenous communities to come and, and, and enjoy that time. So, you know, maybe, maybe that's his next thing they can work on. <laughs> yeah, we've, we've actually had Dan and I and Stephanie have had some conversations about that, that, you know, when this is all over coming up with a yearly annual social distance powwow, uh, of course it won't be social distancing, we'll be there together. <laughs> <laughs> but I think you can't change the name. I think, I think maybe it will, ser it will serve as a reminder of this time and era that's happening right now. And uh, mm -hmm. even though we'll be back to being together, but uh, yeah, so that that's uh, something that's that uh, could be in the works and hoping uh, it can come to fruition to to bring people back to back together again for that uh, purpose. I love it. We had a few more comments. Kuina Bay Indian Community. I'm not going to say the one in Barraga, Michigan. <laughs> wow. Dan, yeah, Dan, was, Dan Simons came on and he, he seconded uh, my other co-founder. Uh, Dan Simons came on and said, we, we will be live in reality. So he's putting it out there. He's doubling down <laughs> with, with myself and my wife. And, and I'm sure Stephanie would, would uh, also triple down too. But uh, if the people want to have a social distance powwow, uh, we'll, we'll do what we can. I love it. We'll keep the comments coming if folks are still listening and share what powers you wanna to go to. Um, so again, I think you just went into the next question. <laughs> so, <laughs> we know your plans to continue social distance powwow. Anything, again, thinking about the women's empowerment. I think that's something too that definitely should keep going. Anything else? Yeah, actually, you know, I was, when this first started, the um, women empowerment shows it was kind of like an I, I was thinking it's like you know what I'm going to do this because in reality I have started talking with a few of my um, friends my indigenous sister friends about wanting to start a women empowerment um, 
like a conference or like a retreat where we bring together a lot of our, our, uh, cause we have so many gifted and so many intelligent women out there, our indigenous women um, to come and share the power of things like power of yoga, the power of breath work, um, the power of like art therapy and such. And then being able to just provide that place for women to come in and learn new avenues on how to heal. Because I think all of us, you know, we go through some, so many different trials in in life you know and some of us experience some trauma on different levels and so being able to learn how to heal those with modern day um, modalities as in addition to our own traditional ways um, and so this has been a dream for me uh, I want to say for about four or five years and I actually had a dream about it where I I was um, an old man was sh sharing with me different conference breakout rooms where women were leading this and I know in intuitively that this is something that I have to do and so we had actually I want to say way back in February or so got together and I got a few of my friends together and I said hey I said this is something that I, I know I have to do I said I want your thoughts I want your inputs and um, I want to make this a, into a reality and then boom this happened so <laughs> you know it's something that we still um, I'm still wanting to do um, to be able to bring together women to to heal women to share to empower each other and such and even our young women as well too our teenagers our uh, 20 year olds and stuff to come and share a little bit as well too so that's something that i'm, I'm hoping to do um, once everything is in a clear where we can be around each other again to have those women gatherings so and i think it'd be so beautiful so powerful and so um you know, I, I don't want to be say get to like too spiritual on this, but I, but that's who we are as as indigenous people. We think spiritually first, and so and our dreams mean a lot to us. And so I've had a lot of messages come to me. Um, my book, children's book that I have, came to me. You know, in that type of way as well too. So I really, um, I, I guess because I'm a dreamer, and so I really follow the directions and stuff I get in my dreams. And so that's something that's on a on the and in the plans and the works and stuff so yeah we want to keep that going that energy going of women empowerment agreed uh well <clears throat> expanding on that yeah i mean it, i think the the sky's the limit on on what could uh in my wife's uh discussion about the women empowerment that started even before social distance powwow, she's been talking about what she just shared with you now. She's been sharing with me for a lot of years. So I, when I had the idea for the Women Empowerment Show, I, I knew she would be a perfect fit because it's been a passion of hers. But I also think that there are gonna be many other things that are gonna come off of this social distance powwow platform. Uh, I just think it opens up so much possibilities that we can share. Um, Dan Simons, my co fellow co-founder, he always says, we're gonna share our story, our, our way. You know, when and that's what I say we're missing in the public school systems. We're missing across, uh, you know, a lot of other places. So um, I think we're going to have the ability to to uh, form our own future, to write, to be able to have a bigger influence on a national level uh, as Indigenous peoples, not just from the social distance power page, but I think overall our youth are so talented and passionate. And they didn't, they didn't have to experience all the signs on the windows with no Indians allowed that our grandparents had to because today it's like they're now fearless. They have a lot of courage. They're doing a lot of things and they're defying uh, the expectations that people have on them as indig ind indigenous youth. I think our children are gonna take us to a whole new place and that's really what's exciting. So we just gotta do our best and not get in their way today, so. <laughs> mm -hmm. Beautiful. It's uh, been so uplifting to sit and talk with you both today and um, I have a final question. So during these times of uncertainty, what words of wisdom do you want to leave us with to support and encourage our tribal communities? I mean, you've given us so many today. Which one do you want to bring on home for everybody? Yeah, well, <clears throat> my wife and I, we, uh, we do, when we do presentations together, uh, I think that's, uh, we've been married for you know, now I'm 20, around 20 years, we've been together over 20 years, and then we got married shortly after. Um, but we were, it's a pleasure for us to have gone through this uh, life, the life together, this uh, experience. And 
uh, growing in our own personal relationship. So now I, it's like we collaborate a lot. And when we do presentations and we share uh, with other people, we always like to end our performances, our presentations in a certain way. So in the spirit of that, uh, I think that's what we will kind of share at this time. Um, but for me, um, it's uh, the, the words of advice and wisdom I like to share with people. What our elders used to always tell us and, and uh, through oral tradition, I always hear these stories about our ancestors saw that that uh, they had dreams about America was going was coming, that that our tr the Turtle Island that was here, you know, uh, still here, but in terms of the landscape has changed, and a lot of our our medicine men foresaw that our time was changing, and um, so what they the words that they sent through our ancestors <clears throat> was uh, that there's good and bad in every culture, every community, every religion, every uh, uh, you know race every background, so on and so forth, that there's good and bad in all of us. But if you take the good and you use that and you throw away the bad and discard it, that you'll, you'll find a way in life to get through the difficult times, that you will find a purpose, that you will, you will connect to the passion of why you were put here on this earth and why we're around each other and together. And I think that's, for me, um, Education is so important for us to learn about why we are in the position we're in today. So for example, if you have some traumatic experiences, but you don't understand why, why you have the need to do this or do that, or you have an addiction, or you have, an, you have an illness, or you have all these things, when you go back and you study your family history, or you look back at what happened before, it helps you understand, okay, no wonder why. My goodness, my grandparents, they went to a boarding school and they experienced a lot of issues and trauma. So no wonder why I'm having a hard time today because they didn't learn how, when they, when they got married and they became parents, they didn't know how to talk about these things or their voice was gone at that point. And so when you do that, when you educate yourself, you really kind of take your life back into your own uh, destiny. You know, you, you can choose your own destiny. And so when you go through those processes, I think, I think it makes it truly different. So I'm gonna send, I'm gonna sing a song here um you know i'm gonna say, share share a song and then i'll turn it on over to my wife for some closing remarks but this song talks about when we come together and if we were together we would we would grab hands we would dance in a circle because that's a round dance that's a nasloha or the, the round dance when we get together we get in that platform and we can look at one another and we can form a circle we can work together and i think that's what's important so i learned this song from porcupine singers and uh, uh, so it's a round dance song, but I wish we could get together and dance, but virtually we'll do that. And then I'll turn it on over to my wife. Me talk, me talk, na pe aho we, we oske ya ya, wachi anka cha ya ya ho we. So that's just a one one time through because I wanted to save my wife some time, but uh, I wanted to see if anybody had any virtual rhythm out there. <laughs> pretty, pretty much everybody had some had good rhythm. I could, I could, I could sense it. So I'm going to turn it on over to my wife for closing remarks. All right. Um, I always like to share a little bit about a word in our Lakota language. Um, that we use as a prayer in itself, or a lot of the times we put it at the end of our prayers. And what we say in our language is midakuye owase. And what that means is we're all connected and we're all related, we're all relatives because, because we believe that there's one creator that created everything in our world and our universe. It should never matter the color of our skin, the language we speak or where we even live in this world because we all come from that, some, that same place. And because of that, that makes us relatives, that makes us connected and that makes us one. And so in our Lakota word for, um, for, ch for children, for kids is, is wakayaja. When you break that word up, it waka means sacred. So we say wakayaja, that means the sacred ones because of where they just came from. And our little ones, our children, they're born, um, into our world still knowing that 
how to live as a good relative. They don't judge people based on what political party they are in or uh, how much money they have or even what color skin they have. They just love each other and accept each other. And so they're great teachers for us. And so if we can learn how to remember to live that way, like our children do, and to learn to love and accept each other and to be able to celebrate our differences, whether that's our differences in tribes or whether that's differences in cultures with different people around the world, then our world would become um, a very beautiful place. And so I always ask, you know, people when, when we share this word to share it with their families and their relatives and their homes and their neighbors and such, because when we do that, we create this beautiful ripple effect and it'll travel into many different homes about that reminder of how to live as a good relative. Um, and to really actually mean that when we say that we're all related and we're all connected. And so um, I just want to wish, you know, and because of that, we're really connected and we feed off each other. And so we want to be able to feed each other hope and compassion and kindness and forgiveness. Um, we don't want to feed each other uh, fear or racism or anything like that. We want to feed the good things. And so we do our part by living that every day, you know, as individuals, we want to be able to, that's how we change the world is doing our part individuals as that. So I just want to close in that way and, and to remember, to remind people that, um, that we're going to be okay. So, mm -hmm. and so with that, I'm going to, I want to say, I'll be like, oh, huh. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> <laughs> we know. <laughs> um, Whitney, Jesse, and also Stephanie and Dan, I want to thank you so much for sharing with us today and bringing your energy and that knowledge and for, for creating that platform for us, for natives and non-natives, like you say, for everybody. Um, I don't know. I know we wanted to share, have time for maybe one or two questions. So as we close up, maybe if someone wants to post a question, but you know, just thank you for your time and for sharing that. And as we think about, you know, mental health and well-being, and you know, COVID nineteen and how you know all of this is part of prevention and hopefully keeping our our, our young ones, our elders, safe and healthy. So thank you so much for your, for everything. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Chris, Melissa, Sam, and other Chris. Thank you guys for uh, hosting us today and uh, for allowing us to be part of this conversation. And thank you for asking us questions about the social distance power page. Everyone is welcome to come on there and get a little bit of hope and a little bit of uh, inspiration. And thank you to all the members on the social distance power page for your contributions uh, to helping so much of us through this time. Yeah. And thank you, Melissa, Chris, Sam, and the other Chris for all the work that you guys do as well too. So. And the rest and all your team. And, and your whole team, yes. Thank you. Thank you. I could Again, just sit and chat with you all oh. day, but we better, <laughs> <laughs> we all have work to do, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's been so lovely. Yep. Thank you. Go ahead. So we'll put, we'll share this on our page, the, I think the link, and then again, just Kitabi Palamia for all of your information and for our attendees for joining us. And we will definitely keep posted on the next COVID and cancer webinar in a couple of weeks. Awesome. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you.